Hi guys and welcome to a new video and welcome to the channel if you're new here. I'm Ollie and this is Turner's Workshop and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to carry out a full service on this John Deere 3320 Tratter. Now this is a lovely compact machine and it hasn't had much love in the past sort of 10 years. I'm not sure when the last service was carried out on this apart from a fuel filter change which it's had very recently and that's because it was having problems with the fuel system. Now, as always, I'm going to begin this service video by carrying out a thorough clean on this tractor. It's quite addictive to say tractor like that. So apologies if I keep saying that through this video. But it's really important to give the tractor a thorough clean, especially around all the fill caps, because the last thing you want is to open any of those fill caps and allow dirt to get inside the engine or in the transmission hydraulic system. If you'd like to get straight into the servicing part of this video, I'll put a timestamp on the screen now so you can skip straight to it. In the meantime, let's give this old girl some love, put some country music on and give her a good old scrub up. and clean. Once the tractor was nice and clean, I then took it for a spin to warm up all the fluids and that's gonna help them drain out much easier. This was the highlight of my day my year honestly i absolutely love driving tractors and i don't get the chance to do it much anymore and this tractor in particular has got the e-hydro transmission so it's really smooth the hydrostatic drive means that it uses the engine to power a hydraulic pump and then that pump pressurizes a hydraulic fluid which powers a hydraulic motor and then that turns the wheels. This gives you infinite speed control, making it really smooth to drive. You don't have clunky gear changes using the clutch. You have one pedal for forward and one pedal for reverse. There's an intermittent fault on this tractor. It comes up with this low fuel alarm even though it's got half a tank of diesel. So if you've got any ideas, please let us know in the comments if you've had this fault and managed to get it sorted, that'd be great. Cheers guys. 
I'll leave links in the description below to any of the parts and tools that you may need for carrying out this job so you can find them nice and easily. And by buying them through the links, you'll also be supporting the channel. So thank you very much if you buy them through the links. You don't pay any more for the products. It just means I get a small kickback off of any sales. Let's start off with a nice easy one and that's changing the air filter. So to pop the bonnet, you lift this lever up at the bottom. That catch unlocks it. Then you can lift the bonnet up and the bonnet stay is next to the radiator there. So just pop that in to keep the bonnet up. And our air filter is located on top of the engine here in this cylindrical housing. So just remove the two clips which hold the cover on. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. And then just take the cover off and that will give you access to the air filter. Now it does actually help if you put the tractor arms up at this point. But I do like to make things difficult for myself. So let's just try and get this air filter out around the arms. And it's got another smaller filter which lives inside the bigger one. So just take that one out too. Whoa, would you look at that before and after? You can see just how overdue this service is. And the blue filter which goes inside the main one is also very dirty. Before refitting the new filter, just give the filter housing a quick wipe out. And then you can fit the secondary filter in first, giving it a wiggle to make sure it's in there properly. And then the primary filter goes over the top and just push that one back into the slot and give it a little wiggle. Give the cover a quick wipe out and you can see it's got the top marked clearly on it. So refit the cover, securing the two metal clips, one at the top and one at the bottom. And that's it. Air filter changed. Nice easy one to start with. If your tractor's got front loader arms, just put them in the fully raised position to get them out of the way and that will give you much better access to the engine and all of the filters. Just as a safety note, make sure they're raised all the way up so you don't end up walking into the bucket because that will really bloody hurt. Now we're going to get underneath the front end of the tractor and find our sump plug which is on the bottom of the engine. This one right here. And on this tractor it's a 17mm socket you're going to need. Now thankfully this sump plug hasn't been rounded off and I use a six sided socket so I get a nice grip on the bolt. Make sure you put some gloves on because old engine oil is carcinogenic. Get your oil drain pan and position it below the sump plug and then we can reach in and remove the sump plug. That's a great thing about working on tractors, there's plenty of ground clearance so we don't have to get covered in oil. We can work from the side of the tractor. So just allow the engine oil to drain into the pan. And to speed up this process, I'm just going to remove the fill cap and that will allow the engine to vent so the oil drains out much quicker. And just look how black and gloopy this oil is. More evidence to suggest that this tractor hasn't been serviced in a long time. To remove the oil filter located on the side of the engine, I'm going to use a strap wrench. So you just put that around the filter and then using a 3 8 or a half inch ratchet, you can just loosen off the oil filter using that. And just position your oil catch tray underneath the filter and then spin the old one off. Use some clean paper towel to wipe up the side of the engine where the oil filter screws onto. Make sure that's nice and clean. And then we can get our new oil filter, which is actually a different size to the old one, but the part numbers are the same. So I assume that they've changed the design. And then we can get our new oil filter, put a light smear of oil around the seal, and that stops it binding up when you screw it to the side of the engine. And then you can just spin on the new filter. You really don't want to over tighten this, so just do it up by hand. You can give it a little nip up with the ratchet strap if you really want to. But I find just doing it up by hand or giving it a little nip up and that is more than enough. As long as it doesn't leak, it'll be absolutely fine. While we're here, I just remove the dipstick and wipe off the old engine oil from that so that when we fill it up with the new stuff, we're not contaminating the oil. I size up the old sump plug washer and replace it with a new copper one. This is a crush type washer, so they're single use. I then wipe off the last few drips from the sump and refit the sump plug with the new crush washer. I then torque it to specification which is 34 newton meters for this particular engine. It's got the 1.6 litre Yanmar. And make sure any old oil is disposed of properly at your local recycling centre. This funnel set's coming in handy again. I then fill the engine up with this SAE 15W40 and it's genuine John Deere premium quality engine oil so really good stuff. A nice little feature about this tractor, underneath the bonnet, you've got this little service intervals list on one side. And then if we go over to the other side of the bonnet, 
we have all of the fluid capacities there, which makes it really nice and easy to order all the parts you need. We know this engine takes approximately 4.3 litres of oil, so I fill it up with about 4 litres and then start checking the level on the dipstick. You can barely see the oil level because the oil is so clean, but it's about 3 quarters of the way up the dipstick. Make sure you remove your funnel before starting the engine up and refit the filler cap, and then you're going to start the engine up and allow the oil to circulate. This will then fill up your oil filter, you can check around it for any leaks and also check the sump plug as well. You will see that the engine oil level has now dropped a little bit because we filled the oil filter up so you just need to fill it up a little bit more to take it up to the 80-90% mark on the dipstick. And just look how clean that oil is, let me show you what it looked like before. And this is how it looks now. Don't forget to refit the fill cap and that's the oil change complete. Now I didn't actually have to change the fuel filter on this tractor because it had only just been done. But if you want to change the fuel filter it's really straightforward. So let me talk you through it. It's actually got two filters. This is a water fuel separator and it's got a pre-filter in it. So that filters out any big bits from the tank. Any water from condensation in the tank gets caught up in this filter separator and it drops to the bottom so you can just drain the water off from here. So to replace the element inside this one you'd isolate the fuel tap to stop any fuel coming into it, empty out the old diesel and replace the filter element and then fill it up and screw it back on. So after the first stage filter it then goes through this non-return valve and that's to stop diesel draining back to the tank. And then after the non-return valve it goes through the secondary stage filter which filters it down to about 1 micron and that's to protect the injection pump and the injectors. This also needs to be replaced so you just spin this off like we did the oil filter, get your new filter, fill it up with diesel, put a light smear around the seal, screw the new one on and you want to fill it up beforehand so that it's primed the system and then that way it won't starve the engine and you won't be cranking it for ages trying to get it to start. And that's it, that's how you carry out an engine service on the John Deere 3320 tractor with the 1.6 litre Yanmar engine. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you click the alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And in the next video, we're going to be carrying on with this service. In particular, we'll be looking at the transmission and hydraulic system, which is combined on this tractor. So I'll show you how to change the hydraulic fluid, the main suction oil filter, the inline filter, the front axle oil, and we'll be greasing up all the fittings. So stay tuned for that and hopefully I will see you then. Cheers guys, take care.